Well, good evening, uh, friends. Welcome to this uh, edition of our virtual Vespers that we're doing this Wednesday evening. Um, as usual with this, before we get started, I have just a couple or a few announcements uh, and sort of updates to share with you. Uh, hopefully, this past Sunday, you received your, um, you found either on here or through a link through the email, um, a link for our sort of uh, connected or stitched together uh, worship service. Uh, hopefully this next Sunday and in the Sundays ahead, we'll have those um, even a little bit more streamlined. So there'll be fewer uh, text boxes, fewer links for you to click back and forth on uh, and have that. Uh, this Sunday will look even a little bit more streamlined and all in one than even last week did. Um, also, as far as that goes, we're, we're starting to record uh, things for worship one week ahead of time. So we've been uh, we've recorded things like our call to worship sermons and those things up through this coming Sunday uh, and a few things for a week or two out. But next Wednesday night, we may, uh, depending on how things go and you'll hear more of an update Sunday, um, we, we will be recording again things like scripture call to worship. Uh, if people would like to lead a prayer, that sort of thing. If that's something you want to do to be a part of that uh, worship video, uh, message me on here uh, through the Facebook page for the church. Let me know, or we'll reach out and see who all wants to do that. Just we, we want to get as many faces and different people involved in our worship videos a as possible. And also, we're still working on straightening out the online giving. Uh, it's coming to us. We have it in our PayPal account. Uh, but we're just unable at the time to link it to our regions account. It's just a, a matter of getting all of our ducks in a row for that. So uh, continue. Uh, you're doing, again, as I've said before, great job supporting the church. We thank you for that. We're grateful that you're continuing to do that. Um, but uh, as I've said before, mailing it in or dropping it off at our Dropbox, good way to get out of the house and a good way uh, to get your funds directly to the church and your gifts here. Um, this week, I'll be a part of a web meeting, in fact, tomorrow morning, uh, about what it's going to look like in the coming weeks to reopen the church, uh, when we might do that, and what that looks like, how we might do that, how long we'll have to do uh, certain steps. Of course, all these things are really at this point just sort of hypothetical, but we're going to be meeting uh, to talk about this. Uh, Alabama CBF puts put together a Zoom meeting and some other things for us to share resources and ideas. Uh, about what that will look like. As soon as we have any kind of date or idea about when we might start on-site meetings again, uh, I'll let you know what that looks like, how we'll, uh, we'll start planning that, what that'll look like, what that'll be. Uh, I'll make sure information is, comes through, to you through Facebook, through the email, through calls from your uh, deacon, uh, letters, whatever way we need to do. We want to make sure when that time comes, when we know that you get that information as efficiently and quickly as possible. Again, I want to tell you, uh, as always, in the meantime, if there's anything that you need, anything uh, that we here at the church or through the church can help you with, do not hesitate to let us know. Call us here in the church office and leave a message. We're in and out checking those messages. Uh, drop one here on the church's Facebook page. The, all the staff see that message so be sure if you need to get in touch with us drop it there uh, or be in touch with uh, your family's deacon uh, and we're uh, here to help we're here to help in this time in any way uh, that we can uh, aside from that there's not much else uh, to really update you on we're just sort of going through this as many of you are um, I, I do know over the last couple of weeks especially weekends we've had you know it's this time of year when we're starting to have severe weather uh, just be mindful of that. We are, when the weather is severe, we have ample cause to do so. We are opening the church for those who need shelter and trying to, in that time, to practice uh, social distancing as best we can. So be, be mindful of that. If it comes to it and you're like, I need to be somewhere, um, the church will be here, uh, likely be open. Check here on Facebook to make sure or, again, message somebody. We're, we won't make that a widely public thing because we don't want to be flooded with people, but just be be aware of that. And I know that especially as there's some more severe weather, I think, scheduled for tomorrow. So 
Anyhow, as we come together tonight for this time of uh, our virtual Vespers, let's let's begin our time together uh, just with a, a prayer of invocation. So would you pray with me? Holy God, we trust that even now, as we're meeting together virtually live, or if we're gathered together with family and friends later to, to watch this as recording, God, we trust that you're here with us. We pray that as we are in the middle of this week, another week where things seem so uncertain, as we are starting to get glimmers of hope and Lord, at the same time, maybe feeling the weight of frustration. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit is with us, that you walk alongside us, that you calm us, and you call us ever on and what it is you would have us to do in the ways that you would have us to be your church. As we come together now for a time of prayer and reflection, we ask your Spirit's blessing on this time. We ask that your Spirit be present. And Lord, as we, we pray with one another and share with one another, that you make us mindful to be praying for one another. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I want to share, as we've been doing, a, a word from the Psalms with you this evening. This is from Psalm uh, 30, verses 4 through 12. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, and I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. And now at this time, I, I want us, as we've been doing, to spend a, a brief moment of, time, of prayer in our sort of threefold approach to prayer. So that's starting with prayers for the church. And again, as I mentioned in, in when we first came together, this idea that we're all getting kind of anxious, all getting ready to come back together for worship. And what does that look like? And, and, and how do we manage that? And you're talking about ministers and clergy who have never had to deal with this sort of thing before. We've never experienced not only how to do church in a pandemic, but how to come out of one and do church in a safe way and in a responsible way. So in, in the days and weeks ahead, be mindful of, of the church. Be praying for your, your clergy, not only here, but around the world, as we're thinking about what it looks like to come back together uh, as a church. And all of us, trust me, I know as you, much as you do, we all want to come back just full throttle, ray right back into everything, coming back together as if nothing had happened. But I think we all know that that's not possible and that's not our, our future and our way forward. So be mindful, be praying for the church uh, in this week about how, how we're going to discern this whole reopening process uh, of the church. Uh, again, that's the first thing. The second thing is to be praying for others. I, I mentioned last week praying for those uh, either affected or not affected by COVID-19 who are in hospitals, unable to be with uh, family, to be with friends. Be mindful, be praying for them, but also praying for our, our health care workers who are caring for them. It's a strange place for them to be. I can only imagine not only the weight of, of being a health care worker, a nurse, a doctor, uh, anyone in, in that hospital building, but now they're also taking on roles that, that are otherwise reserved for chaplains or for family members and those sorts of things. So be praying for them. Be praying for those who are our essential workers, getting us uh, everything from our, our groceries to our medical supplies, all those people who are having to work in the midst of this, those who may be unafraid and those who may be scared every time they go out the door. 
And then just pray for, I don't know, take some time this week to pray for your neighbor, your actual physical next door neighbor. Someone who, who maybe you know deeply and personally, somebody maybe in this strange time you've actually gotten to see um, and get to know a little bit. Just take some time to pray for them. They're going through this with you, uh, whether you know them or not. So uh, be praying for them. So that's for the church, for others. And then, of course, take some time to pray for yourself, for your family, those who are sheltering in place with you. I know it's... Uh, the days seem to be getting longer. This time seems to be getting longer. Uh, I came in to our uh, uh, dining room just a couple of days ago. I was on the phone for about 30 seconds, and there was a loud crash. And I walked in, and Carter was standing on our kitchen table. The light fixture was swinging from the ceiling and had shattered. Uh, when I asked what happened, Carter simply said, I don't know. Um, it's getting to be that time, folks. It's going on. How are you doing? It, it's It's just... It's, it's tough, I know. So take some time to pray for yourself and all that might be going on uh, in, in your life right now. So that's what we want to do. Take some time to pray for the church, pray for others, and pray for ourselves. So let's take some time to do that, and then I'll uh, voice a prayer for us and have a few words of reflection. So let, let's pray together. Holy God, here we are again praying for your church. In this unprecedented time, Lord, we, we pray for patience. We pray for guidance and for discernment. We pray as we seek to come back together, Lord, that you guide our decisions and our thoughts, not our own desires, but Lord, what keeps us safe, what keeps us what keeps us wise and healthy together. Lord, we pray that in these coming days and weeks as we begin to contemplate or even begin to open up our services again, God, that your spirit will be present there, that we may find new and creative ways to come together for worship. And Lord, help us to be reminded of how much uh, worship gathered together as your church truly means. And God, we pray for others this evening, for those who Lord, are, are working so hard to help keep us safe, to help uh, keep us healthy, Lord, those who are, who are helping us to just have some semblance of normalcy in our lives. God, we pray for them. We pray for those who are caring, for those who are sick, those infected with this this virus and those who are sick from other things uh, we pray for them not only as they are doing that what you called them to do but Lord, as they fill in in these other roles that perhaps maybe even they feel un, untrained for now we just lift them up and pray that your spirit be with them guiding them or even in those moments Lord, we we ask a prayer for ourselves or that maybe our patience is Wearing thin, maybe we've become, God, I don't know, stir crazy in our time at home. Or maybe maybe these are days and times we find ourselves uh, at peace and finding some, some relaxed pace. Whatever it is, God, we just uh, ask that you be with us. Or as we seek to, to find you in these moments ourselves. So, Lord, we, we lift these prayers up to you, those we voice aloud, those we keep in our hearts. We trust them to you in Christ's name. Amen. And now I want to just share a few thoughts from the psalm that we read. Um, psalm 30 is, is, is an interesting psalm in that it's you can almost track uh, whatever story is behind the psalm in the psalmist's words. Uh, he and they, they seem a lot like maybe some things I've been thinking lately. Maybe you have too. The psalmist sort of reflects on how his life prior to whatever this tragedy that has sparked his song, uh, th this this life before it was pretty steadfast. He had it figured it out. It was immovable. It was solid. It was certain. He says, 
I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. Life before whatever has afflicted this psalmist was fine. It was great. It was a gravy train with biscuit wheels. It was running on a rail. Everything was fine. But then he says, God hid his face. I don't know what that is. I don't know what affliction the psalmist is referring to. But to him, it seemed as if God had hidden his face. Does it feel that way maybe to you in these weeks? these days that maybe I don't know something inexplicable has happened and you just don't know what to do or how to deal with it but even in the midst of that tragedy the psalmist cries out to God and and in doing that doesn't just cry out woe is me help me God but instead declares his desire to praise God to tell of God's faithfulness and then his next sentence, he says, God turned his mourning into dancing. How? Why? Did God change his mind about whatever it was that the psalmist was doing, that the psalmist now suddenly had everything he ever wanted? No. But because in the midst of his tragedy, God changed his perspective. It reminds me of a Yiddish folk tale I've heard before. It goes something like this. Uh, an old man lived in a one-room house with his wife, his mother-in-law, and their four children. And the house was pretty small. In fact, it drove the man crazy to the point where one day he sought out an, an old wise woman in the village. And he went to this woman and said, oh, old wise woman, my house is so small. It's so cramped. It's miserable. I can't sleep at night. We can't. You know, we're all crowded at the table. I want a bigger house. What, what can you do to help me? What, I, I, I want to get out of this misery. She said, do you have any cows? The man said, well, yeah, in fact, I have one cow. It's a beautiful cow. I love my cow. And the old wise woman said, well, bring the cow into your house and let it stay there. And the man said, that's, that's kind of strange, but you're the old wise woman? Sure. He brought the cow into his house. It spent the night. It was noisy. It smelled bad. It took up all this space. Next morning, he got up and he trudged up to the old woman's house. Well, this cow is, is, is miserable. We're, it's terrible. Our house smells. It's noisy. We can't move around. She said, do you have any goats? He said, well, yeah, we've, we've got four goats. Uh, they're nice goats, uh, uh, but they smell and they're goats. She said, well, bring them into the house. So the man brought the goats into the house. So it was him, his wife, his mother-in-law's four children, a cow and four goats in his house. And it was miserable. So the next day he goes back to the old wise woman and says, this is terrible. We can't even move anymore. Well, what are we supposed to do? I wanted my house to be bigger, not this mess. She said, do you have any chickens? The man said, yeah, I've got, got several chickens. And she said, well, make sure you bring all the chickens into the house. So the man brought all the chickens into the house. It was him, his wife, his mother-in-law, four kids, a cow, four goats, and all of his chickens. Loud, noisy, couldn't even sleep that night. He got up the next day. He went to the old wise woman and said, what am I supposed to do? She said, well, did you have your cow, your goats, your chickens, all of them in the house? He said, yes, it's driving me crazy. She said, well, put them all outside of the house tonight. So the man went home and he pushed out his cow, his goats, his chickens, and he slept peacefully for the first time in all that he could remember. And the next morning he ran to the old woman and said, It's wonderful. Our house is so nice now. There's so much room. It's so great. No more noises. No more smells. It's wonderful. Did she change anything? No, no. She changed his perspective. I think about that, that story. I think about that in light of this psalm and what we're all going through now that Maybe as much as we want everything to speed up, as much as we want everything to be different in our, in our, our times and our circumstances to be changed and to be different, that maybe sometimes all of what we're going through is to call us to change our perspective. And maybe God is wanting us to look not at, at the challenges and tragedies of the things that are infected, affecting us right now, but in the, the silver lining to those clouds and the hope that we have to recognize those people who we 
now call essential that maybe we overlooked for so long to recognize that there's something special and something powerful about spending time face to face with one another, not just through things like, you know, Facebook Live or whatever. I don't know, maybe. Maybe when we thought our life was immovable and certain, and now it's been turned upside down, that God's not going to just magically make it all go away or expand it and make it better for us. But maybe God is asking us to change our perspective just a little bit. I hope you'll take that with you uh, through the rest of this week until we see each other again through video Sunday morning and once again live here next week. Perhaps by the time we come back together for virtual Vespers next week, we'll have some information about uh, when we can begin reopening things or maybe at least have some idea about timing for things in general. But until then, I hope you have a good rest of this week. Uh, my prayers go with you. Uh, I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you. And I, I pray for that day when we can see one another again. And so as we close our time together now, I'd ask that you would pray uh, with me uh, the words that Christ taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.